Welcome to a Sniper Side online training lesson. The video you just saw was taken from a recent precision rifle class I just taught. Before I begin the class or offer up any instruction, I do what's called the fundamental evaluation. I want to see what the student is bringing to the table. So I take everyone out, do a safety brief, and then let them shoot a five shot group with me observing. Now there's a lot of information out there when it comes to precision rifle training. And I'm not showing you these videos to single out any particular person. I purposely cropped out uh, the shooter's face. But I want to show you that not everything out there is going to be successful for you and, and it's not all valid information based on uh, the rifle you're shooting or, or you know a lot of other factors. We try to teach the fundamentals in a way that they work for everyone. There's not something that works better for me and not for someone else. I try to address it across the board, stripping away the game of telephone because as we know, shooting is the biggest game of telephone. Trigger control is the biggest issue we see. Uh, there'll be other videos that show trigger control errors and, and that's our number one. Number two is generally body position. We see people off anywhere from 10 degrees to 25 degrees or more from the rifle. When shooting with a bipod, we want to be straight back behind the rifle. Uh, we've talked about that at length. It's part of recoil management because recoil management tells the barrel where it's going to be when it releases the shot. So that way there, if we're all managing the recoil uh, correctly, then we'll have a lot better zero for our rifle. It's one of those cases where my zero is different from the next guy's zero, and that's because of recoil management. So let's look at the problem we see in the first video. It's the grip, how he's holding the rifle. And the reason he's holding that way is from a series of videos that were out there that showed people shooting the rifle that way. Lucky for me, it's a, it's a training moment because I can show you exactly what's wrong with that grip and what's being left out and what that grip was supposed to demonstrate. So let's go in and take a look at our grip and, and let's analyze that small piece of footage. If I just bought that in case Nick didn't find that. But you're trying to pass too? Yeah. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. Okay. With a precision rifle, we have an area here which is called the grip. This is a pistol grip style with the Accuracy International chassis. That doesn't mean you necessarily grip the rifle in a way that's a death grip, but we need to bring the rifle straight back to the rear into the shoulder pocket. That's where that finger standoff came from by showing you that you want this pressure to come straight back to the rear. The problem is, is that fingertip standoff, especially with a Magnum style rifle. With a light recoiling, suppressor, muzzle brake, six millimeter, that finger standoff is fine. There's, there's no issues with it. Once you get into a Magnum caliber, this finger standoff doesn't quite work. Now, also, you really wanna put more of the tips, the pad of the finger on that and increase your pressure back significantly to hold it into the shoulder pocket. Otherwise, recoil's gonna exploit it, and like we see in the video, you start losing that, and it's gonna be moving away from you. So, my recommendation is because we're shooting this rifle in a more of a cross the course format, is actually hold the rifle. This hand has two purposes, one, is to press the trigger. The second is to hold the rifle in the shoulder pocket, which is what these three fingers are for. Our thumb, I generally like to wrap around because of multiple positions. There are those that will float the thumb and they'll put the thumb as a support here to stand that trigger finger off. 
But if I come around, I'm consistent across positions. So I come in back into the shoulder pocket. It's a straight back. If you're getting a sympathetic squeeze with the thumb, you may want to isolate it. And some people will actually have to rotate their hand to get that good 90. So now the thumb and the trigger finger form a U on the back of this pistol grip. But it's still supporting it so that we can pull it back. What the thumb's doing is keeping the recoil from trying to go to the side and rotating the rifle away from you. What this grip and back into the shoulder pocket is doing is keeping the rifle secure, especially in the case of a Magnum. 300 Win Mag, 338, rifles of that nature. We have to support the rifle for that. Recoil is like electricity. It's gonna take the path of least resistance. If you have a weak grip on the rifle, then it's gonna exploit that. The finger standoff is a weak link in the system with a bigger rifle. With something like this, a 6547, you won't see as big of an issue. You may never see an issue. Same thing with the light recoiling semi-automatic in the video. But he still loses the grip after a couple shots. He's, his fingers are constantly slipping off that pistol grip. Now I'm not saying come up and death grip it. You don't have to do that but you want to support the firing task. So the, this hand is designed to support a 90 degree trigger finger in holding the rifle to the rear, like this. We're gonna demonstrate it, we're gonna go through that process, but understand what we're looking at when it comes to recoil, especially with Magnum calibers. Come in, support the rifle, straight back to the shoulder pocket, and then press the trigger to the rear. This hand has two purposes, the trigger and to support the firing task. It's got to come back into the shoulder pocket. I come in with the mag, then I'm going to grab my rear bag. My rear bag is supporting the rear of the rifle plus I am supporting the rifle in my shoulder pocket laterally. Up, in. I stay to the rear. When the hand comes off, this hand takes over. Questions always asked, how much pressure do I need to hold the rifle back into my shoulder pocket in order to successfully manage the recoil and, and run the gun? Well, during this last precision rifle class, I reunited with a former scout sniper instructor who was in my unit, and he had an excellent visual for this. Right here, I have a 15 pound weight. We have a 15 pound rifle. From a dead hang, holding this weight up, that's how much pressure you want to exert to hold it back into the shoulder po pocket. If this was an 18 pound rifle, this would be an 18 pound weight. 12 pound rifle, 12 pound weight. Now one caveat with that, it depends on your, your muzzle configuration. If you're having a hunting rifle that's a Magnum, you may want to increase that and I would say you have to go in line with the recoil you're gonna experience. But in the prone, with a rifle like this, we can show you how much pressure by using this weight. Just hold it up, and that's how much pressure you need. A lot of times people will say it's a firm handshake. Well, that's basically how much pressure you're putting on the grip. But we want that pressure coming straight back to the rear, so we wanna be able to hold that rifle up into our shoulder pocket same way we would hold the weight. Same thing, Frank. Now understand, nobody is saying that the fingertip standoff is wrong. We're just saying it's another tool in the toolbox 
and you have to know when to pull that particular tool out. The thing with the fingertip standoff is in a 6547 like this, really effective muzzle brake prone position, I can do that fingertip standoff. We want more of the pad of the finger on there and we want to come straight back into the shoulder pocket, but it requires increased pressure. In a Magnum scenario, 300 wind mag, 338, I don't believe that it's the right tool. That's up to you to determine and how much effort you want to put into a grip of that kind. It's a great visual to show you what straight back to the rear looks like, but at the same time, you have to know the context and how it works exactly. Just seeing it done doesn't necessarily make it right for the application you're using it. Even in the video that they had it in, there was a lot wrong going on. With that 300 wind mag they were using, the shooter's hand was also coming off the rifle. And they were blaming uh, his missed shots on some other things, but it was clearly his trigger grip firing hand. Thank <laughs> you.